Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Pod B here in the Premont Super League. My name is William Hurston. We are joined again by the master of Terravores, by the jet setting man, by the California dreamboat is what I'm going to call him. Um, <laughs> Fran, Fran back in the booth. How you doing again, Fran? I'm doing spectacular, dude. I'm oh. ready for some more promoter in action. Man, I'm always you. ready for some more promoter in action. You really are. You are the leading force in content for pre-modern. Uh, that, I'm not going to give you that title, but we are back again today uh, with another match. We are going to be catching with uh, Ricky Thorson here. He's playing uh, his white prison deck, and we are going to be watching him face off against uh, McLean Denny. Uh, Umbashi? Is it? Good? How do you pronounce that darn thing? Is it Umbashi? Umeboshi. Um, um, Umeboshi. Umeboshi is how I pronounce it. Umeboshi. I don't know how, how, how you're supposed to pronounce it. I don't know. I don't know. All I know I'm is every guessing. time. I, I, all I know is every time I play against uh, McLean, he just kicks my ass repeatedly for the most yeah, part. Actually, McLean, McLean is a local McLean. here in uh, SoCal. So like we actually play. I, I've, I play at his house pretty often. Absolutely. And I keep forgetting it's McLean, not McLean. And yeah, I know. A, it's <laughs> Everybody <okay>. does. <laughs> it's okay. I'm tired. I did a whole a whole ass podcast with him and we just still can't remember it. It's okay. It's late. <laughs> um Ricky here, White Prison. Um quick rundown on this deck. Um we've I don't know what order these are going up, so that'll be something I fix for the next time when I do this series. We'll figure it out better. An interesting deck. Can we can we all just say that in general every time? Uh, what stands out to you about it? Yeah. So uh, this is like probably one of the spiciest brews that we're going to have in this in this uh, pre-modern uh, super league. And uh, yeah, this is a go big control deck with Eternal Dragon and uh, cards like Windborne Muse, Wrath of God, etc. But also an Armageddon deck with Winter Orb as well, and trying to control the game on both of those axes, <coughs> cards like Ancient Tomb, City of Traitors, actually six total to uh, soul lands, which is a lot, that's more than most decks can afford to play. Couple in that with Reshadon Ports, Trevor's Ruins, we have some, we have some beautiful synergy with City of Traders. Dust Bowl, which also has some beautiful City, uh, uh, City of Traders synergy as well. You can play Dust Bowl as your land for a turn, and then you sacrifice the City of Trader before it gets sacked to its own ability. So that's pretty sexy. Um, some Mox Diamonds, some Fast Mana with Mox Diamond and Mind Stone, and a Thrun Dynamo to offset the um, quote unquote. Uh, the, the, the evenness and the, the, the fairness <laughs> of both Armageddon and uh, Winter Orb, which they were never really <laughs> meant never, to be. Never to fair. Be fair. Uh, but anyway, uh, and then a couple of Decree of Justice is a stroke of genius as the top end of the deck. This is when once you are ramping with Eternal Dragon with all of this fast uh, artifact mana, then you can uh, sort of refuel uh, by uh, casting Stroke for, I don't know, five six seven however many you can uh, and then a decree of justice as well uh, we see we've seen black uh, control the uh, black white control decks do something similar with skeletal shrine instead of stroke of genius of course exactly. the style we have a bunch of who is who in uh, like white which is one of the best colors in the in, for cybers in the in promoter exactly i mean we all know it's uh, kirtar's desire is the mainstay in that sideboard we saw we're gonna see that bang and win so many matches so many <laughs> but all right, it's not McLean. It's McLean. Denny. God, we're going to get it. Uh, he's on Zombies. Uh, McLean plays a lot of really cool decks. One of his favorite decks yes. is not available currently uh, on Moto because of a bug that for 10 million years they have not been able to fix, apparently. Um, but he's on Zombies today. Tell me a little bit about Zombies because, boy, howdy, can this deck do some really silly things. Yes, uh, Zombies has my vote for the best Dark Ritual deck in the format, actually. And not only that, but also the best Wasteland deck. Um, and that is because uh, this deck is not trying to do something cute. This deck is not trying to, oh, turn one Phyrexian Arena, and then after the first turn I get 
close to even on cars. I'm still down a car, but it's fine. And then on the following turn, then I'm even in cars. And then after that, it's card advantage. No, no, we're not messing around with any of that. Wait, you're, you're playing not a your dark ritual, ritual fan, friend? What? You're playing your dark ritual and you're playing like two Carnophages and a Sarcomancy, putting six powers in, into play on turn one, and then just killing your opponent before the dark ritual cardless advantage actually matters. That is how you get card advantage from dark ritual. That is how you're supposed to play dark ritual in pre-modern. Um, so yeah, this deck is actually very, very good. I'm a huge fan of the zombies deck. I think it's extremely underplayed and uh, it has a lot of access that it covers. It has Carnophage, Sarcomancy, 1-mana 2-2s, literally the best rate you can find in the, in the entire format. Then you have <coughs> Lord of the Undead for boosting all of the dudes and for extra card advantage. Uh, Rotlum Reanimator is kind of incredible. It triggers us off of clerics dying, but like most of your <laughs> dudes are actually clerics somehow. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty funny. Um, Wither Wretch is a nightmare for graveyard decks. And then on top of that, you have Plague Bearer, which is incredible against uh, the Shrimp deck. So every turn you're just spending three mana and your opponent needs to have a Stifle. Like they can't even have a counter spell. It needs to be specifically Stifle or Vision Charm. And then um, the Shepherd of Rot actually gives you against Propaganda decks and stuff like that. Shepherd of Rot actually gives you reach, which is kind of amazing. All right. So we're jumping in here. looks like um, Ricky's going to be on the play uh, here in game number one. Um, Looking like we're getting some mulliganing decision. Um, yeah, what do you think of these hands? Uh, this kind of looks like a banger of a hand for um, McLean down here at yes. the bottom. McLean's hand is very looks very good. It looks like he's actually on the plate, and okay. uh, he's going to. He's going to have like very easy to oh okay actually he's actually on the draw like ricky's on the play and he kept that hand so ricky's hand is actually a little bit situational um he still doesn't know what he's playing against he doesn't know whether seal of cleansing or armageddon are going to be good oh here's and exactly he has like a, sorry you go ahead yeah so he actually has like a hand that he doesn't know how good it's going to be or not so that's like the only tricky thing uh mclean top deck's probably his best uh, possible top deck and then we're going to see exactly what I was talking about a second ago mm -hmm. and we're going to see the actual power of Dark Ritual and like what Dark Ritual is supposed to be doing in pre-modern we're going to see turn 1 Sarcomancy probably into Shepherd of Rot I imagine. Honestly it's possible that he should go for Carnophage even but uh, Shepherd of Rot makes, makes sense because it actually allows him to use the mana efficiently. He actually got full value from the Dark Ritual and now he's uh, he, the I imagine the shepherd is going to get plowed here. Yeah. So, trade it for a card in um, in Ricky's hand, and he actually got uh, he still has a two two in place. So obviously a pretty pretty big deal there. We're going to see the uh, seal of cleansing, which is not particularly great against Sarcomancy. <laughs> no, no, not at all. But all right. yeah, it Swing. is what it is. Yes. So we we see an attack here and. I would imagine that we're going to see Carnophage in, into playing Lord of the Undead on the following turn. Um, this Plague Bear not going to be doing too much in this matchup. So, uh, I although, of course, McLean has no idea what he's playing against, right? So, he has that going for him. Um, uh, Ricky has that going for him, I meant. Exactly. Um, you know, a pretty, you know, good hand here for uh ricky on a slower matchup but unfortunately this is just a deck that well gets under this game plan um lord of the undead gonna go ahead and come in here get things moving um i'm a little bit surprised about that lord of the undead there um ricky has all of the i mean if i could imagine a wrath of god deck it would have kind of the opening that Ricky just had going on. Maybe McLean thinks that he's playing against some sort of like green white creature terror deck of sorts. And that's why he chose to not play around it. But um, yeah, uh, this is a matchup definitely where Armageddon is just not going to do anything. This Wind War Muse is kind of incredible on this board state, though. I'm surprised that he didn't attempt to like Wasteland on the previous turn, but Wasteland's gonna be just as good this game as well yeah, so yeah. it's good this turn as well so it's gonna be fine and armageddon not necessarily on its own doing a bunch but if he goes windborne muse into armageddon next turn yes 
that 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 may be an issue. That's yes, a that I'm pretty sure that's exactly what's going on here. Uh, I am sensing that we're looking at uh, McLean's uh, hand, uh, board state Correct. because we immediately saw the, <laughs> the 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 arrow go and point <laughs> at the seal of cleansing right after he drew the bad moon. <laughs> it's like you, you're there. How dare you? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So uh, uh, yeah. So well, interesting this wasteland, spot though. Bought here. Very interesting spot here. Like this windward muse is kind of incredible on yeah, this I mean, board state. <laughs> it is. And now in our perfect knowledge of things, um, the obvious play here is to probably like kill a land so you don't get Armageddon here. But he doesn't have that. Uh if I'm McLean, I am not expecting Armageddon whatsoever. Exactly. In fact, it looks like the exact opposite of what an Armageddon deck would look like. So yes, I would not expect the, I would not be expecting Armageddon at all. Yeah, but uh, we uh, will see here whether Ricky gets a little bit. Um, don't don't get greedy. Greedy? Yes, like <laughs> Ricky can get greedy here, and he can deploy the Exalted Angel here, flip it on the following turn, and then uh, Armageddon after that. I think it's much better for him to just play the land and get in and then like sl slowly deploy his mana again. Yeah. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know. It's close. I think it's close. I he think it's close. I could, I could see it going either way. He didn't do anything. Okay. okay. Yeah. Not doing anything is kind of interesting. A again, McLean is not expecting Armageddon. Like I would not no, be expecting no. Armageddon. At but what? All. But so, what is Ricky? What? What's Ricky's plan? Let's put ourselves in Ricky's shoes. Like, why not do anything at all? Yes, uh, I think that he is just because there's two three three in play that can attack, and Ricky knows it. I think he just wants to core Haven here. But if you're attempting to core Haven, why not just Armageddon? That that's the part that I don't understand. Yeah, like there's no, hmm. there's no swords. Like he's not going to like land a swords or like maybe a vendetta. Like there's no huge punishment to just putting your opponent in position where they have to drive five million lands to even come close to racing you. Yeah, or or what I would have thought about would be to just drop down an exalted angel, and then like you can attempt to flip it on the following turn. But that's also oh, kind of bad. Here, what Ricky can do is like now he's gonna go to waste, so he needs to port here. Uh, porting means that actually McLean cannot attack. Uh, I mean, he can only attack with one creature. But yeah, but yeah, Armageddon bit... still takes care of that. Like I don't understand because he knew it. He knew um, McLean had the wasteland. So why and he had had it tapped, so why not arm again and get rid of that and still have your land drop? Because he held his land, but now he has enough to play that land to play that wasteland. Or that uh yes. Armageddon. Yeah, it's uh it's definitely perplexing. <laughs> uh, I'm not too sure about what's what's going on there, but uh, yeah, he, they, he's they, got they a master kind of plan. Yeah, there maybe Ricky's playing on an, another level that we're not even thinking about. Okay. Um I would imagine he, here he's going to die. So he needs to get her right now, which yeah, is going okay. to be good. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely going to be good. Absolutely. And we sometimes see zombies playing like maybe one snuff out tops. So I think that this Windborn Muse, like, uh, is, is it Windborn? I don't know. Yeah, it's Windborn Muse. Yeah. So I think this Windborn Muse is just going to go the distance, most likely. But, I mean, McLean could just draw land into land, and then the Carnophage is easily racing the, the Muse. Mm -hmm. Well, this Muse is uh, doing its thing. Yeah, but and we, we, again, like, we, we see, like, one of the awkwardness of Ricky's deck, right? Which is drawing your stuff in the wrong order. He found he right now found the Mox Diamond in a deck that does not really have enough lands to be supporting Mox Diamond, which means that you're gonna find yourself in situations like this where like you are forced to play or to your lands in order to cast your Armageddon, and now you just don't have 
your Armageddon anymore. And you also don't have your <laughs> your lands to pitch to the Mox Diamond. So you you don't have the you don't have the cake and you cannot eat it either. <laughs> no, you don't have absolutely anything. Uh, uh, but so this yeah, muse is still getting there. Exactly. This is like a YOLO muse. Like if, if this muse gets there. It's going to be great. And if the Muse does not get there, like if McLean does not find another land in time, uh, the, the Muse is just going to, to do the thing. So he needs to connect three more times before McLean draws a land. Yeah. McLean and, was sitting there uh, clicking his mouse, just like, be a land somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, if he finds a land, I mean, he's just a favorite to win, honestly, just like straight up. <laughs> mm-hmm. well, so... Getting furnace. Yeah, we're, we're yeah we're in a situation where Ricky has no card selection. He doesn't have anything like Sylvan Library or, any, or anything like that. So yeah, it's going to be like a little bit annoying. McLean there getting the uh, Phyrexian uh, furnace makes sense. The only castable card in Ricky's hand that allows him to cycle and to get out of this. So can McLean find the land? No, uh, that was. I mean, this is, I mean, the, the one that's upcoming, that's the very last turn. So yep. Ricky here not playing out the City of Traitors because if he has, if he finds a source of pleasures, he can actually plow an attacking creature. So, oh, never mind. Never mind. Oh, he plays Winter? Wait, what? Why? I, I don't know. I have nothing. <laughs> huh, interesting. Well, I, did, I mean, it just doesn't matter because at this point, like the race is, is now on Ricky's favor anyway. So it's fine. Yeah. Uh, Ricky can actually play a second win more Muse, which should guarantee that the game is locked up. But yeah, that damn that that win more Muse did an insane amount of work. <laughs> Windborne Muse, the true MVP of pre modern. Don't let anyone uh, tell you different. Yeah, I mean that that actually looked very impressive. Like the win more Muse came down, the game was close, and then the win more Muse came down, and it was just like a run away from there. And that's exactly one turn too late. Yep. That is exactly one turn too late for for McLean. So uh, yeah, we're gonna be we're gonna be going to game number two very quickly. Yes, an interesting interesting match here. The concession coming from McLean. Moving on to game number two. All right. So um, interesting sideboard cards here for McLean. Tell me about them. Yeah. So I'm definitely interested in, in snuff out. We saw Exalted Angel. We saw Windborn Muse. Both are uh, both of those are cards that can get snuffed out for zero mana, so love that. I could definitely see an extra copy of Rotlung Reanimator. Um, Rotlung Reanimator is a great way to play around opposing Wrath of Gods. We saw Steel of Cleansing, though I would expect Ricky to cut those, so maybe I do want to keep the bad moods in. I'm not interested in Smother, not interested in Genetic Plague, really. Obviously, Perish doesn't do anything. I don't think Stormy Master, Contagion, even recurring... Um, uh, what, what is that? Oh, Spinning Darkness. That's the name of the yep. card. Yeah, I don't think any of those cards actually matter. Uh, he's cutting some Withered Wretches. He has not seen Eternal Dragon. Nope. So... If you have not seen the Turtle Dragon, there's no real reason to keep the Wretches, I guess. It's just a 2-mana 2-2, two -two, but you have a bunch of 1-mana 2-2s, two which, are, which are obviously better. I would cut the Plague Bearers before that, though. Um, maybe he wants to hold on to the Plague Bearers to kill the Morphed Angel, but that seems a little bit optimistic. Okay. Um, still kind of yeah, decision I don't know, like, here. I don't yeah. know. Like, I, th I feel like I would cut the Bad Moons and the Plague Bearers before cutting the 2-mana two 2-2s. Two yeah, the bad moons don't feel great in this matchup. When you've seen seals, when you've seen, well, even a windborn muse, that really cut down on your ability to get wide and get big. Uh, well, maybe that's an argument for a blood moon. It pumps up a, a, the one creature you can attack with. Maybe maybe that is an argument for a bad moon, I suppose. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's I, I feel like, again, like, McLean is cyberding entirely on the blind. Like, he thought that he was playing against a control deck, and then he got Armageddon out of the game, so... I mean, it's it's not easy for him. No. Uh, here we have like a little bit of a cleaner sideboard uh, because Ricky knows what he's playing against and he knows what this is going to be about. I expect to see the Call of the Herds coming in. If if it's not for this matchup, then I don't know what matchup they're for. Uh, we see Ray of Revelation over uh, like Seal of Cleansing. That makes a lot of sense. You want to have uh, two for ones in your race in case your opponent finds multiple, uh, multiple bad moons. 
Uh, we cut the stroke of genius. I don't, you know, it's a wasteland deck. It's a, a, a deck that is trying to like kill you before a card like stroke of, stroke of genius can actually matter. We also saw him cut a decree as well, so that makes sense. Um, yeah. Ricky Great. actually has a lot of dead cards, uh, but he is playing a deck that has tens and zeros. So you know, Winter Orb, pretty bad. But mm. when you have Winter Orb alongside Windborn Muse. Pretty good. So. <laughs> Are you surprised at him? Well, I mean, maybe Armageddon is not at its best here, obviously. That was probably best case scenario for his Armageddon last last game. Yeah. Um, so Armageddon was terrible, but he had Windborn Muse. And Windborn Muse right. plus Armageddon, that's great. So that that's the that's what I'm saying, that his cards are either tense or zero. Um, mm-hmm. So they're very situational, and they work great under specific circumstances. And these circumsta- if these circumstances are not met, then all of a sudden, like his cars literally don't do anything. Like before, he had access to the Windward Music, which he actually top decked. He didn't actually have that in his in his hand at the time, mm-hmm. right? He, it was not in his opener. He just drew that. But before he drew the Windward Muse, his Armageddon was just a dead card, straight up. He if yes. he had Cassie Armageddon, he would have lost to the to the board. He, he was so far behind. <coughs> so yeah, I, I'm surprised to not see Wrath of God in Ricky's list, but I guess that he's not. Ex- oh, he's, he's got not, two of them. Oh, Oh, he's, he's, got two, two he's got two. Never mind. Never mind. But I no, didn't see them in the main deck. He's got them in the cyborg. Yeah, but no, uh, no call of hers coming in. I agree with you. I'm surprised that that didn't happen. Yeah, um, those are like the cards that you know. It just lines up against two twos. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would expect. I would expect the the the, the three threes to line up against against two twos in a positive way. Maybe he thinks that his mana is not good enough, which makes sense. His mana is not good enough, uh, but <laughs> it's a, it's a matter of like. If that's the case, why is Call of the Herd in your cyber in the first place? You know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. so we had a Carnal Phage leadoff here for um, McLean. Uh, yeah, this <sighs> this is like a fine opener for the for the zombies that we have like a nice little curve. We have turn one Carnal Phage into turn two Shepherd of Wrath. We see the difference between leading on, um, you know, like a Dark Ritual hand and a non Dark Ritual hand. So that's that's what we're seeing in action here. Uh, Source of Pleasures one turn too late. Ricky's hand is actually not incredible, actually. Like, it's okay, but it's not particularly impressive. And it just doesn't line up necessarily well against what um, what Ricky could have. Yeah. And what a McLean could have. And we do see this card of just, like, going at it, just bashing in. This Rutland Reanimator here is some... It's nice because it's both a clock and also insurance against Wrath. We mm-hmm. okay, this Mox Diamond is, is, is a big game though. So we're gonna Mox Diamond something out here. Uh, probably yeah. the Dust Bowl, I'm assuming, is going bye bye because that's not gonna do anything in this matchup. That's yeah, it tossed. depends. It depends on how much Ricky treasures his life total. Because it's possible that this ancient tomb can only get tapped exactly once or something like that, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, feels like he is actually happy with that. So now he's going to oh, he taps a land. I don't know if that I don't know how that win that progresses you winning the game because he's one he's got one and two drops. I almost would have preferred dropping like the dropping the morph, right? At the very well, least? I think that you could have. So I think Ricky's plan is to just like play the morph as like just just play the exalted angel face just up full cost, which it. he can. Do. Yeah, he can just do that next turn thanks to the ancient tomb. So I think he's setting that up, but I guess he's not content enough with cycling decree for two, which is what he could have done there. So, but there's, I mean, there's a wasteland face up, so I think he may have gotten a little bit. He may have gotten a little bit greedy there. And this bad moon is just incredible for my That's claim. a disgusting it, bad moon. It turns a four turn clock into a three turn clock. And mm-hmm. it just puts so much pressure on this ancient tomb. Well, Source Blusher is a great draw, though. Yeah, here. So here now we're you, probably going to. See, yeah, you go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, like, we're going to see, like, a very clean curve here of yep. Exalted Angel into. Uh, the the source of pleasures, but that's going to be met by the plague bearer, which is going to be incredible. Oh my god! One mana kill your exalted angel. Ugh, man, yeah. this, is what, this is what dreams are made of, right here. It is. I I will not lie to you. I completely forgot 
and got blown out in a match by forgetting that morphs don't actually have a mana value. <laughs> yep. It's so no, it's, disgusting. It's, yeah, definitely. Uh, if pernicious deed, it's it's another one that you know really gets morphing an angel is, is a cost, you know. <laughs> like yeah, you, you need to mean it. You need to mean it. <laughs> you just gotta go all in. This is my choice. Uh the zombies just kind of getting there. Um it's gotta be uh, does the furnace really do anything for you here? Or do you just want to save your mana and try and decree for something big enough? And then like, I, I don't know. Well, he can't really play the ancient tomb. That's a big problem. This is why I said earlier that, uh, you know, maybe he should, she should have pitched the ancient tomb to the Mox Diamond because he's at seven. So if he plays ancient tomb, now he's on a one turn clock as opposed to a two turn clock from the Plague Bearer plus the, plus the um, Carnophage. Exactly. Well, that was that match right there. Heading on into game number three. Uh, how are we feeling on play versus draw in this matchup? It seems huge. I mean, whenever you have a Dark Ritual deck, obviously play versus draw is going to matter a lot. But when you, on top of that, have a Mox Diamond deck, that also means that, you know, when you have like a deck with Winter or with Armageddon that is trying to set something up specifically, like all of those all of those things uh, do do add up. Um, so I do think that whoever's on the play is going to be like slightly favored. I mean, probably it matters more for McLean. I, th- I feel like than it matters for, for Ricky because Ricky has like ways to catch up while McLean's way to catch up kind of just happens on turn one. It is specifically dark ritual. And if you dark ritual into like, you know, a couple of dudes, that is like one more hit that you get to have if you're on the play. You, you get to attack, attack your opponent one more time. So that's, exactly. a, that's a really big deal. Agreed. All right. Um, an exciting match there, that last one. You got to see the power of just what a curve can truly do uh, in a magic match. You know, one drop, two drop, hit you in the face drop. Um, <laughs> that That's about what it is. Um I have to assume these call cards have to come in. I don't understand why they wouldn't. Yeah, so again, it's a wasteland deck, so you know that's kind of rough. But these winter orbs are just straight up dead cards. I, I mean, I don't know if Ricky is like keeping these winter orbs and these Armageddon's because they just combo so well with the windworm uses specifically, which they do, right? They, they definitely do. But it's one of those things where like. Yeah, I mean, th- this makes a lot of sense for me. Like, you cannot hope that that's going to work. Like, you have to assume that McLean is going to have a plan for that, which he does. Like, he has Spinning Darkness, and he also has uh, Snuff Out, so he he literally has free spells <laughs> against against the Windborn Muse and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah. So, th- this Call of the Hurst comedy makes a lot of sense to me. They just line up well. Again, it is... He only has eight green sources in his entire deck, so I think he's very low on green sources, especially when those green sources are both Trevor's Ruins and Mox Diamonds, which are very far from ideal. Yeah. So I feel like that, like, probably Call of the Heart should not be in his sideboard, but if it is in his sideboard, it, it should, should be in. for a matchup <laughs> like this. You know what I'm right. saying? Okay, well, um, yeah, we're, we're going to have to see how this uh, turns out here. Uh, game one, we saw the power of a prison element locking out some creatures, followed by a big haymaker. Uh, game two, we saw curves. So uh, it's going to be uh, Ricky on the play here. Game number three. Uh, it is not the best hand I've seen in the world, but it's not the worst. Um, yes. So I, I do think you very reluctantly keep Ricky's hand and you you just become really sad about the fact that you have four Trevor's Ruins in your deck as part of your white sources uh, which he actually does not have that many he has seven basic planes and then like four Trevor's Ruins so he actually is very short on white sources but uh, you know he, he got bailed out by top deck in the planes there so everything is right with the world I'm kind of a little bit surprised that McLean kept his hand he has a turn one Carnophage and then kind of nothing else. Like the, the second spell he can cast is going to be a three drop. Like we're going to see something very different than what we saw 
in the previous in the previous game where he just curved out very very smoothly. That's not going to be the case here. Well, my guess is he's going to say Windborn Muse with this, or maybe Swords. Either way, like maybe the therapy is good enough where he's like, if I just curve, do enough, and then I therapy their key card at the right moment, that's just enough to aggro through it. That yeah, that's possible. And he also I has also though, see- rot lung, so he can rot lung. He can do that, then he can rot lung, and then sacrifice something to therapy, and then get value off his rot lung, right? Yes, definitely. So that's probably that 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 probably makes makes sense actually. Uh, that call of the herd is just ridiculously good here, right? <laughs> let's let's go chonky elephants. Just I mean, just a three three. Just like putting a three three into play. But like we see the of of course we see the, the the cost of this right like he effectively time walked himself. That's a withered so, wretch. Yes, but he doesn't even need to deploy it right because there's still gonna be like he knows that Ricky does not have any uh, soul land <clears throat> in hand. I guess he just wants to be sure that he's going to get rid of the of the call of the yeah. herd. So and he sees he Max wants- Diamond from Ricky too. Like he's seen the yeah, Max right. Is- the problem is, I feel like he just cares more about the windborne muse than he cares about the um, the the elephant, right? So if you're not willing to sacrifice your Carnophage in order to do that, <clears throat> then you should probably spend that turn to like Rutlung to get to uh, get rid of the windborne muse because that's a much more valuable card for him. Gotcha. I I mean, play Rutlung and then sacrifice the Carnophage, right? You obviously don't sack the Rutlung there. <laughs> All oh, right uh, here. This is so. This is this is the interesting part about this zombies deck, right? So, if McLean plays Rotlung here, he gets to then sack the Carnophage, and he doesn't get another thing back. But he gets to play around Wrath that he knows about very very efficiently <clears throat> because a Wrath here it's kind of actively bad for Ricky, right? He gets to like he blows up his own elephant, and then McLean has two 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 zombies left. Uh, but not only that, but we also have um, we also have access to uh, two cycling uh, effective like you know ball linings in hand, <laughs> so mm-hmm. that's pretty great too. Yeah, I wonder if he's just going to go for yeah. He just goes for the Windmore Muse here, which makes a lot of sense. Yep, get rid of that. He's got protection um, from this Wrath of God yep. with the Rot Lung, obviously. Um, well, but that, actually, it doesn't quite work because the Carnophage doesn't yield him a zombie. So I don't understand sacrificing. I don't understand sacrificing the Wither Wretch, which, by the way, he's going to be punished because Ricky drew another call of the herd. But by sacrificing the Wither Wretch, now if Ricky happens to Wrath, if he wants to Wrath, he only gets only a single zombie. While if he had sacrificed the Carnophage <clears throat> the previous turn, he would get two. And those might be some of those small intricacies in a deck like this. Like, I think a lot of people see a deck like Zombies or White Weenies or Flippy or whatever. And it's like, oh, you play Dude Swing with Dude, right? There are a lot of intricacies in this deck that you have to keep track of to get full value out of it. And that may just be one of those where it's, I didn't think about it. Yes, 100%. Uh, th- this is very, very often. I see people like saying Goblins is an aggro deck, for example. I, I see that constantly, and I feel like that's just not true. <laughs> Goblins is mm-hmm. like a mid range. Even sometimes it's a control deck. Yes. Sometimes it's an aggro deck. So like sometimes it's a combo just, deck. <laughs> kind of right. <laughs> so uh, a deck like Goblins, a deck like Zombies, they have so many layers. That's what makes them so fun to play, right? Like there's there's so many layers to all of these decks. And you need to be pivoting, like when to get aggressive, when to try to uh, aim to play a longer game, when to try to, uh, you know, just tempo your opponent out. Like that's sometimes something that that you need to you need to do. You need to like blank and get card advantage by having your opponent die with like five cards in their hand or something like that. So mm-hmm. um, being able to pivot and like to identify those situations and like pivot between them in in, in a, the proper way. Is, is is what's most important important about about these decks. Exactly. Now this bad moon is kind of sexy because it lets it trade evenly with let something trade evenly with an elephant token on face at least. Uh snuff out being an excellent 
option as well. Uh, but I don't remember. He has seen – has he seen this wrath at all from Ricky, or is this the yes, second he has. wrath? Okay, so he knows about the wrath. Yeah, so if we look at the screen, we see, like, the reveal cards on the right. Because okay. we're looking at McLean's screen from here. Yeah, yeah. I'm not tired at all. I, I saw that. I was testing you. Yeah. Okay. So here we see McLean doing something very smart. Like, he, he deploys the Shepherd Rod, uh, which you would think, like, I mean, he knows about the Wrath. Well, he's actually playing around the Wrath right now by forcing Ricky to deploy it. So this Shepherd of Wrath threatens to do a lot of damage mm -hmm. because it doesn't need to use combat in order to deal that damage. So it's going to put Ricky in a very weird situation where he needs Wrath, but notably the Shepherd of Wrath is a cleric. So if Ricky rats now, McLean is just like, shrugs and then swings for six on the following turn by playing a blood moon a, a bad moon and then swinging with his uh, both of the two two zombies he gets from the for the from the rotten reanimator so i mean yeah uh, it's very the, very smart play from mclean there exactly epitome of lose lose here for ricky um this board is building up into a position where no matter what he does it's not gonna matter and, yeah, and, and this is the, we, this is like the the YOLO attack, this attack from the elephant effectively confirms McLean. It just tells McLean, I am going to wrath right now. Yes. <laughs> that's that's what this attack means. <laughs> yep. All right. So we will say bye bye to all the creatures on the board, except for these two that are coming to come back. This next turkey is just going to be sick for McLean. He's going to bad moon, swing for six, and he can also cycle a gem palm if he wants to. Like, yes, he's going to need to cycle the gem palm right now because otherwise, uh, you know, this this port is still doing work over here. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, I I like my clean spot, especially because even though Ricky has a call of the herd. It doesn't quite matter because uh, McLean has the bad moon, so yeah, the call of the herd is is is, is going to be trading with these zombies. There's no way so, you don't yeah. play out the bad moon here, right? Uh, well, I mean, there's a port on Ricky's side, but like now McLean has enough lands. I do like deploying the Rutlung there. It just okay. uses your mana more efficiently. Sure. If uh, Ricky happens to play just a single creature, McLean could just kill it with snuff out. So he's kind of he's fine with that. So, yeah. And I don't think you play like, around Armageddon anymore. Because mm -hmm. if Ricky Armageddon's, you're like, you're just so far ahead. Like it would need to be just exactly a wrath or like plow into a wrath into Armageddon or something like that. Like you're at that point, Ricky needs multiple cards to, to line up here. Excellent. So he goes double call, which is formidable. How do you play this? Do you bad moon it and make him trade and get in for three? Do you hard cast the snuff? You Well, you can hard cast the snuff out, right? Six mana. I don't think, I don't think you hard cast this snuff out because uh, now at this point it is free to actually play around Armageddon. So you can just do that. Uh, but I do feel like you do get aggressive. Like I feel like McLean smells, uh, he, he smells blood here. And I feel like he's just going to uh, at least swing with both of the zombies. But you could just snuff out and swing with all three of your creatures, you lose to specifically Wrath of God, but then you beat everything else, because at that point, you also beat Exalted Angel, because you swing for six, your opponent gets down to um, to three, and then on the following turn, even if Ricky just hard casts an Exalted Angel, which is probably like the best thing that he can do besides Wrath, then at that point, you are you can just uh, go ahead and uh, you know swing yeah. anyway and just kill Ricky before the uh, trigger the ability from the exalted angel actually happens, which is um, it is like is exactly what we see here. Exactly. And I don't like that block from Ricky because the only way he can win is if he top decks specifically Wrath, and by blocking anything that is not the Rotten Reanimator, he effectively said I cannot win anymore. Yeah. The. As you exactly as you just said, blocking the rot lung, make it make it trade. It's going to trade with something anyway. Get that creature out of the way, and then you know pray to the pray to the card gods to find your wrath. You're exactly right. Um, but that's going to be it. Uh, Ricky not drawing what he needs. Uh, McLean going ahead, picking up this win. Zombies going ahead, and getting there. Um. An interesting matchup. The the power of synergy really coming into play versus 
the power of a deck that has a lot of swingy cards, but if they don't line up right, they just don't line up right. Yeah, we are, we're seeing like Ricky's deck is just kind of not really coming together. Like he obviously had an idea. And by the way, he improved upon in a very significant way. He took, yes. uh, he actually, his mono white control deck uh, that he has tuned to this day, which is like maybe it's 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 a while after we, <laughs> we after we we record this no, matches. We were so, very quick about this. Shush, it's okay. <laughs> so um so so yeah so he he definitely he, he definitely has been working on this deck for a while and this was like one of his initial ideas or like one of the, the the initial concepts for the deck and where he got it right now is spectacular. But like we see that at this stage of the deck we see a confused deck right mm -hmm. we don't quite understand what the deck is really trying to assemble and it has a bunch of sort of the disjointed cards that if they're drawn in the proper order maybe they can work and maybe they can they can add up to a win but what if you don't draw the cards in the right order and then you end up with like a little bit of a just non-functional deck, right? We, we, we saw that where Ricky did not have enough removal to keep up. He did not find the win more Muse when it mattered. And uh, like in the two games where he did not pull together the uh, the combo that he assembled in game one, he simply fell short to the, to the aggro deck that had a game plan and executed it properly every single time. The first time it, it felt a little bit short because, uh, you know, there, there was the, the combo. They want to punch off the win more Muse plus Armageddon. So, we see a situation where if Ricky has his A draw every time, he's going to win, but his A draw is going to happen like less than 5% of the time, while McLean's C and D draw is going to otherwise get there. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Um, an amazing match still. Two great players, two innovative and awesome decks. Uh, Pod B rolling around or rolling on through, doing some awesome things. Um, we'll catch you guys in the next match, and we'll talk to you later. Talk. Bye-bye.